Hello, heroes. It's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, where just in 15 minutes a day will fuel your mind, your body, and your future. All right, just going over a couple announcements when we're waiting for people to get on. Uh, make sure you check out our SoundCloud, and that has all the, uh, the 15 Minute Fuels on there so you can catch up and just listen to something just every single day. I'm, you know, I'm going back to the We Are, I'm going back to these 15 Minute Fuels myself. Uh, not because I want to hear myself talk, but I go back to them because when we do these things, this is when really good stuff starts to come out. You know, you don't really, you know, I would actually make it a practice for everybody to just kind of make, make out like you're to talk to a chair, talk to a chair like you're talking to someone dealing with the problem you're having and you'll be amazed. You ever, your advice, you ever notice that your advice to others when they ask you a question is really advice you could have used yourself or your advice to others is like amazing. You're like, why didn't I take that own advice? So these 15 minute fuels do that. So I, after 160 plus episodes, you know, I don't, you don't remember it all. So just go, I, I go back and get those, that one big nugget or something I needed that applies to my day. So we're continually learning from ourselves. Same thing with the We Are Heroes. When I watch them, there's some nuggets in there. I'm like, oh, that was great. So, you know, I, I become a student of that as well. I don't, you know, when I watch, when I listen to these or watch these or watch the We Are Heroes shows, I don't watch it like I'm watching myself. I just watch it for the principles and stuff in there. So I, I kind of disassociate uh, with myself on there. You know, if that makes any sense. So today we're going to uh, talk about hero mindset. We really need to hit on that. Hope you, oh, thank you guys so much for checking out the diet hacks. Man, did that video go bonkers. You know, I think we have over about 3,500 views on that. <laughs> Who would know you guys would be interested in apple cider vinegar and a little bit of iodine? So it's stuff like that. So I, you know, all I could tell you with the diet hacks, don't get your ex expectations up too high. Just enjoy whatever I give you. I might talk about cucumbers one episode, which I do talk about cucumbers, because these are just things that made it easy for me to diet and, and stay on track and get to the goal. So things are, some things aren't too sexy. They're kind of boring and mundane, but if it works, it works. So, uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing it. That was really cool. So uh, the, then they expire. Remember, all these expire the following week. Why? Because you got to watch them and you got to apply them. And they expire. And they're expiring too because all of these diet hacks are going to be used in a program uh, or mini course that will be a fully paid course. So um, I always, and hopefully, hopefully you guys know, like everything I'm going to put out there, whether I charge hundreds or thousands of dollars for them, you know, I will, you'll get, you'll get them first, you know, so I, I make them, I give them to you guys so you can see what's going on. And, um, you know, then, then we actually, then I'll actually make a program. And a lot of, I don't know anybody who does that because they want to save it, but you know, I, I you know, I want to, I want to share it with you guys. Look, look what we did and you guys could get that stuff and then, you know, it'll become a program later on. So, uh, that's diet act. You'll see that every Monday, uh, Wednesdays, you'll see my favorite, we are heroes with a little bit of commentary on it. And Friday, I know we'll do something cool Friday, maybe a picture, cool quote. Let's talk about the hero mindset. So going over the hero mindset, we gotta get back to that. Um, I've been asking a lot of questions, you know, what's your favorite this, what was your favorite vacation? And I'm starting to see the apathy of, of the, the martyred person. You know, when I ask what makes you happy and, and what makes these things, I'm getting too much of this, the feel, the, the sound good one one answers. You know what I mean? Like, what makes me happy? Reading the Bible. You know, it's like, listen, I know, I, I get it, but really, like, this is from a person who probably doesn't read the Bible every day. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm hearing too many bullshit answers, which aren't really the truth, okay? Because it sounds good on a, on a thread. And the thing is, if we're not gonna be honest with ourselves, you know, and I'm not saying, living in the Bible does make you happy, don't get me wrong, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, <laughs> like what, what makes you happy? Serving the poor. You know, I mean, I get it. I get it. It sounds good, but I'm trying to distinguish. We got to break through saying the right answers that society wants you to, wants to hear so we can martyr ourselves and be, um, you know, sound good, you know, put on the, 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 the shiny mask. No, let's be real. You know, what makes you happy? You know, what, what, uh, what's a, so I, I know the real answers and I could kind of smell the, the other ones. So let's be real with the answers. Okay. Or don't answer at all. But this is why I do, I do those questions because I want you to get used to being absolutely totally honest with yourself and saying, it's okay. It's okay to be honest. You know, I mean, uh, and, and because that's the only way you're going to find who you are and, and, and what it is you're supposed to do. So let's go into that hero mindset. So the hero mindset, in order to destroy the secret identity or defeat the secret identity, you must embrace the hero mindset. And the hero mindset consists of three parts. Every hero has it. 
number one, massive pride, massive pride, massive ego, massive pride and massive ego. So we go into the definition of things because a lot of times we use words we're, or we're taught not to be one way, but we never were, we were taught and we just said, okay, but we never understood the why, right? So just remember, we need to become childlike here. So everything I'm talking about is, is coming from a childlike perspective. So why? So when you look at pride, pride is, um, one's pleasure or satisfaction in your own achievements or the pleasure or satisfaction of the achievements of others you're closely associated with. Think about that. So when my son does well, my son's going to Vegas uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday to compete in the, in the national championships as a black belt. You're damn right I got pride for him. And you know the thing is like I'm a, I'm, I have pride, I have pleasure and satisfaction with that. I have that for my family, you know, um, the team, his team, you know, us. I have pride for you guys. So the thing is like it's very good. And people say, well, that's a healthy pride. It's like, no, like, well, let's get, let's, let's separate good. Or, let's not even say good or evil, good or bad. Let's take that out. Let's just say, listen, we, we'll call it what it is. You know, then uh, pride is also pleasure and satisfaction. This is the big one of your own gifts and qualities. Think about that. I think that's the most important that. And, and I'll finish the definition, the gifts uh, or pleasure and satisfaction of, of your own gifts or qualities or possessions that you have that people widely admire. So if people think your watch is cool, your car, okay. But, but let's go back to, to pleasure and satisfaction with your own gifts and qualities. I think too many times you have so many amazing, you do have so many amazing, awesome qualities that because you're so afraid of seeming prideful, we swing to false humility and we're like, no, 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 no. You know, it's like, no, listen, God gave you a gift and a quality for you to tender, for you to develop, for you to expand, and for you to, to take that skill and maximize this to a potential. And I'll tell you right now, you'll, it's very hard to maximize that skill or maximize your quality if you don't have a little sense of, yeah, this is my, this is my gift. I am good at it. You know, like, like you, you need that little, I am good because if you're just martyring and, and self-sacrificial all the time, you'll never have that, uh, that drive or that pride to take your skill to another level. You know, I, I know most of you like at work, you guys are working and you know, at certain, at certain parts of your work, certain jobs you have to do at work. Listen, you know, you're the best at it and you ever, you probably said it underneath your breath, you set it to a coworker. So you know the things in your life that you're really good at, that you're better than other people at. And so, see, you gotta get that little, listen, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm created to do. And then you gotta get that little like, this is my gift and talent. I'm really proud of it. And I have so much pride and, uh, pride and confidence in it, I'm gonna develop and maximize it. I'm gonna find pleasure and satisfaction of the gifts and talents that I've been given, see? So there it is. And then the ego is one sense of self-esteem, and self-important. So that's like saying, hey, listen, a hero has to have pride. They have to, a hero has to have pleasure and satisfaction in their unique gifts and talents and achievements. And they have, enough, they have to have enough self-esteem and confidence to know that their message, their gifts, their talents, and who they are as a human being or a hero is important. I just combine those two definitions right there. So the hero has the pride and the ego, and then what completes that hero over a villain, this is the difference that makes a hero and a villain, is then the hero has humility. Because we were never told we could have humility. We're always told pride. In fact, I watched a sermon the other day, it says the opposite of pride is humility. It's not. It's not. You can have humility because every hero knows their weakness. We know our weaknesses. We sure as heck know our weaknesses. And in our weakness, comes the humility. In the weakness comes the courage. How do you get courage? Remember, a hero is what? One who is admired or idealized for courage, contribution, outrageous and outstanding achievement and nobility. So to hit the courage, you need the humility because you're, you're self-aware of your weaknesses or the areas you're, you may not be as strong at. And in that comes the humility. And in that comes the courage because a hero never lets their weakness get in the way of their purpose. So even though you're a little scared and, 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 and you know, you might not feel up for it, you just go ahead and do it anyway. That's where the courage comes from. Because to be a hero, the mindset of a hero is not to become a perfectionist, meaning that we're not waiting for circumstances to be perfect. We're not waiting for circumstances to come around to help us. A hero is a potentialist. All I could ask is that they do the right, that they do, not even the right thing. All a hero could ask is do they, they do the best they can with what they got in the moment they have it. That's all you're responsible for today. 
And that's only today. Tomorrow's another day, but today, you could only do the best you can with what you got in the moment you have it. Circumstances don't affect you. That's all you could have. So let's say my arm was broke and I gotta go adjust people tonight. So I have no left arm, it's broken, right? So I'm, the best I can is adjust with my right arm with, and I do it the best I can with what I got in the moment I have it. And then when that arm would heal six weeks from now, I'd have them both and then my best would be better, you know? So that's all we have to, that's all you have to do because it takes away expectations. And the only expectation is to say, listen, I can do the best I can. So if today, if 80% is the best you got today, then your 80, when you hit your 80%, you hit 100%. And that's what a hero does. They're just, they're like MacGyvers. If you used to watch that show MacGyver, they just do the best you can with what you got in the moment you have it. You know, if there's a fire and there's a kid across it, they're not gonna think about it. They don't wait for the circumstances. They're not gonna wait for the wind to change. They're not gonna wait for the fire department. Because the hero has the mindset also, I think a hero is self-aware of this, that then I love this quote, you guys love it as well. And Nathaniel Brandon used to talk about this uh, when he used to work with uh, his patients. And when someone would complain and they would be in a complaining state, he would just stop them and he says, listen, here's the news, no one's coming to save you. And what he meant by that, when someone could absorb and really get the message that no one's coming to save you, it makes you become totally resourceful and take personal responsibility. And a hero takes responsibility. That means like there's no circumstance that's going to change to come to save us unless we make and do something about it. So no one's coming to save you. So the hero has these wonderful mindsets. Uh, and also there's a childlike, there's always a childlike aspect to the hero because it's a, uh, they're, they're almost altruistic, you know, meaning that they, they're almost thinking slightly delusional on the optimistic side, which is good. Well, like I said, it's delusional others. Remember I said, you know, when you're doing something that someone else doesn't understand, you seem as delusional or obsessive or um, irrational, but they have that, you know, there, there is, they, they have like this, this dream, this vision that things, you know, it's almost to others, they don't understand it because it, it is almost to the side of optimism and truism at that point. And that, that's that childlike thing. Remember, kids are optimistic, they, they're confident, they have imaginations, they live in present time consciousness, they're uh, closers, they're relentless, and they question limitations. So, you know, that hero mindset is all having that. So when we go back to you know, what are things that make you happy? What is the thing that brings you joy? It might be your kids. But so then the next question is, well, you know, what's taking you away from that? So then we go to see, well, I love spending time with my kids. Okay, then then how often do you do that? And they're like, well, not, not, not much. Well, so what else is going on? And then you get to start to see in your life that how many things are you doing because you've been forced to do? You're like, well, I mean, you're like, well, I'm doing it for money. So we're working for all these other things to someday do something. And unfortunately, you guys know, someday never comes. Someday is the eighth day of the week that never, ever comes. So just going back to that hero mindset, we need a reminder that a hero does have pride. A hero does have ego. And a, do, uh, a hero does have massive humility. A hero is a potentialist. They're not a perfectionist. A hero has courage. Because, see, courage is the hero. And the opposite of courage is conformity. Conformity is that. Conformity is, is giving me the success 101 answers that everybody reads. They're like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, that was, that was the right answer. I get it. No, no, no. It wasn't a real answer. It sounds good. So conform, that's conformity. Be you. And because, and, and if you, the high, and a hero definitely gets to a point where there's a certain part of a hero that really, they care about what others think, but at the same time, they don't care as much as most of us do about what heroes think because their vision, their purpose is, 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 is up there. And that's where that, that, that pride and ego come in because that allows you to take your confidence level to a new level to get what your calling was to do. And uh, I, I just want to continue to tell you guys to feel good about it. Look in the mirror, uh, praise yourself, you know, and just say, hey, listen, and be proud of yourself. That's what I mean by that. Um, you know, thank the God that gave you the gifts and talents. But then what are you going to do with it? And be proud of it. You know, don't uh, just don't pass it off. When someone thanks you, appreciate, uh, accept it, re really receive it. Don't deflect. Don't uh, when someone appreciates you, when someone praises you, when someone thanks you, don't deflect it. Receive it because that's acknowledgement. Isn't it amazing? It's like you, you know, so many people they just it's they, they live a self-sacrificial life in such a martyred Catholicism type of purgatory way that it never ever like it just 
you know, you know, you never really live life and, and it's okay to, because I, I know your emotions are in check. If someone says, hey, you did a great job, I'm so proud of you, you say, thank you, I received that. You should. You should be proud of yourself when you do something great and all you've done. Just think of all the experience you had in your life, the goods and the bads, especially the bads, what you learned from that. And you could help somebody. And someone says, thank you so much. You helped me so much. Oh, no, no. It was God. No. God was using you. You did it. Otherwise, God would have told them. So God used you, right? So, like, you got you to gotta just understand who you are, I think, number one. So from that aspect, you're a hero. And you gotta, you got to remember who you are. It's always remembering. It's not that you, you don't need anything else. It's remembering who you are. And for some of you, you got to remember whose you are. So if you want to go from the religious side and says, listen, I'm, I'm a son or daughter of the king, then act like one. You know, if you want to, if you, you want to take religion out of it and say, listen, I was, I was created by an amazing creator. I was born with, with perfection, right? Amazing that I was able to do what it was created to do. Then embrace that, that the gifts and the talents and the ideas and the wisdom, you know, are running through you. It's just been cemented through life and dogmas and principles. And now it's about remembering all that stuff. So I just want to encourage you guys that you're extremely more powerful than you think. Um, shrinking is, you know, no one benefits from you shrinking or going small ever, okay? So going small or shrinking for the betterment of other people's insecurities will not make this place a better world. Go big, shine with everything you got, just like kids do, or fly, just like kids do. And if it exposes others, and they don't like it, if it exposes others' insecurities, if it exposes, exposes others' uh willingness to not move forward and they don't like that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a motivator for them, but that, that has nothing to do with you. So just live, live your true authentic self. I don't believe we have as, we never have as much time as we think we have ever. And so the thing is the time we do have left, make sure, let's not be waiting around for something or someday. I think it's something that you could start doing immediately right now after this. So let's embrace the hero mindset because as you embrace that hero mindset, you'll be able to really fully step into who you're created to be. And of course, the last part of the hero mindset is embracing the I am. And I think that over time, over time, after you get that confidence and you feel, you know, it's funny because when you actually say, yes, I am good at this, and you actually start giving yourself some credit, you realize that nothing bad happens. Like sometimes when you say, I am good at this, you kind of look around like you're going to get struck by lightning, right? Because that's what you were taught. But the thing is you're going to realize that, no, it actually, it feels good. It's the true you. You feel light. You know, you actually, it's nice to give yourself a little bit of credit from all the hard work you've done and what you learn as a human being, that you are valuable, that you have self-worth, that you have self-importance, and you are very important to other people. And then when you realize that you're not, you know, going to go to hell and you're not going to get struck by lightning, and then you could start embracing that final point, which is the I am. And I am means spirit and action, that I am and fill that in. You know, I am a powerful person. I am a child of God. I am important. You know, I am a hero. And when you start to embrace the I am, that's when your true power really starts to unlock. And then you really become an amazing person. Even better, you don't become an amazing person. You allow the true amazing persons you always were to really come out and shine at its 100% potential. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching 15 Minute Fuel. Um, tomorrow we'll have uh, one of, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll release a kind of favorite episode of mine from We Are Heroes. Make sure you guys check that out. And uh, they're great and comment and share on those. Share this as well. Punch that share button. Have an amazing day because uh, all we want to do here at 15 Minute Fuel is in just 15 minutes a day, our goal is to fuel your mind, your body, and your future. Thanks, heroes. We'll see you tomorrow.